is if I don't activate Kundalini in 2020, is it a big problem? Or can I do it this and without can I do it in this life without a hurry? The word hurry and Kundalini don't even go in the same sentence together. See, what happened was, is this is why any master can see when a being is not a master. Because truly the only le high levels of mastery is Tantra and Kundalini. And if you can't plug into the great mother, then you can't unlock Kundalini for any prolonged periods. You may be able to take some substances and blast up there really briefly, but if anything, you'll snatch out your tether. This is what they were taught. This is what they talked to all again, these right was it, uh, left brain thinkers that wanted to come into the great sanctum through only learning and like this, this, this knowledge in all these books. <laughs> and they were telling them, listen, if you don't got any roots, this was what Carl Jung told them. What we found out is when we get these super intelligent people, which they had reached this height of what you would say is intelligence. That was the birth of intelligency. And when they reached that height, what was being noticed is a lot of them were going crazy. They seemed to unlock the code and figure out the riddle, but they were just getting untethered and going into megalomaniac from depression to suicide to all this stuff was happening. And so they bought in these, these deep, when, and this is a succession of this, even Jung had only been reading about this because the alchemists encountered this problem. And they solved the problem. They showed that basically what the hermetics, what the hermetists were doing, because the alchemist is the first one. Hermetics came later. The hermetics tried to do it through just this knowledge about the metals and all this kind of stuff that they were examining from Earth. And the alchemists were trying to tell them, listen, if you don't tap back into my app or matter and ground yourself, when, what's going to happen is you're going to activate it, the Therian, and you're just going to be untethered and it's going to take you. Because it's going to be like you're going to go into a state and you're never going to be able to come out. The reality here is, is that we have to understand how to take to, to take um, not to, to be able to take. Um, maybe the, the word is not take to be able to accept. There it is to be able to accept what our great, great ancestors, which are, you know, almost unfathomable at this stage, what our great ancestors are, are, are giving us in their projections and, and visions, but not let it override who we truly are, which you would say it's an ego. You have to have your ego really small, but, but there and hard and able to maintain its roots while still getting the full blast of the ancestral energy revealing to you all there is. And then you need to be able to come back out of that and actually be able to ground that literally and actually make an application with it to be able to do something with it to bring it to life in our world. And so, again, what was noticed is when people were trying to think their way into the holiest of holies, they just went crazy because they didn't have a root. What would happen was would be they would start opening up their subconscious mind and there would be just closet after closet after closet of terror. Terror is things you don't understand. Things you can't define because how the mind works is when you're even looking around you, the mind feel comfortable because it recognizes everything that's around you. So it's able to adjust into a frequency. If you were looking around you and you recognize nothing, this is like somebody opening the trunk of the reality. And all of a sudden you see the whole thing and you see that it's not even where you are and you can't where you thought you were. And you can't recognize anything. Not only you don't see chairs, you don't see couches, you don't see clouds, you don't see stars. You don't see anything that you actually recognize. So what this throws the body into is basically extreme terror. So masters know how to deal with that. They go through a process of allowing them, they're, they're allowing their consciousness to not always try to define everything in order for it to feel comfortable. Because we found out that if you try to define everything, you create a cage. You, it's what definition is. Definition is a cage. Even when we use words like trust, unity, these things are bigger than words based on the definitions that we've given them. But we try to confine them within our definitions. And that's the limitation to the language. So continuing with this, my answer to your question is. So with Kundalini, what happened was is that 
the Catholics and the Jesuits and, and these groups needed to get rid of the forbidden fruit. Everybody was aware of the power of Kundalini and Tantra. Now, when I say everybody, anyone that was looking for that level of, of, of advancement. However, it was also very clear that it was very dangerous because even in Tantra alone, it gives you the power of magnetism, which pulls things to you. And when those things are being pulled to you, it's kind of like even like a moth going to the light. It just feels this energy that it wants to be around. And that's what's drawing it to that being. But it, they don't necessarily know exactly what's going to happen to them if they unite with that being. And so there have been men and women alike, and there are still men and women alike, cults and covens uh, that are still functioning, that there are leaders in there that have unlocked certain parts of this kind of tantric power. This is what Eliezer Crowley even did when it went inverted. And people get sucked into that, not really knowing what they're, it's almost like you come into, you, you, it's like what you see with magicians hypnotizing people with spells. They don't even know why they're being drawn into it. And then all of a sudden, of course, the abuse starts. Then you start noticing others are there being abused too, but somehow you're still not able to get out of it. And it's because the master has somehow been utilizing this Kundalini force, tantric force, to create fields. These fields are huge. Like a field could cover, in, uh, one person's field can cover the entire country. That's how big the field can get when you learn how to grow the field. However, again, you can imagine, you know, you got, as I talked about, the five levels of compartmentalization and what I call the evil avatars, the, the schizoids, the masochistics, uh, the anal, the oral, and the psychopathic, right? And which are the shadows of our great traits. And that if you gave those beings, which that's what the inverted pentagram is, if you gave those five beings that act out in those characters inverted kundalini power, which they some of them have now, you get untold atrocities. That's why it was suppressed. So kundalini, again, is not something that you want to hurry up and rush in doing. Kundalini is not technically described properly in the community as something that you just sit there by yourself and you try to rise only through breasts. You're getting a part of it. But actually what it's really about is understanding the as above, so below, which is the female and the male and how they connect. How if I, if I touch a woman's hands like this, my opposite and her, po her positive and her negative are opposite to my positive and negative, which makes us jump off. Basically, it makes us actually connect. And then there's more to it. How to clean out her channel. See, let's talk about this very briefly. And this is, again, let us understand the work that's actually ahead of us and why we want to continuously do the best to support our teachers that are still aware of this level of knowledge. Now, what's happened to even the woman or the womb is that the female is an extension of the great mother. And the great mother is bringing all of these beings into life right now. But she's always going through issues and problems, fights, quarrels, bombs, death. It's happening right now. So as a mother, her womb needs to be cleared. OK, because that's how she that's how her energy and her manifestations work. So what Tantra is, is Tantra shows how what could be possibly the sun clears the earth's kundalini okay by sh in the, in sh by showing that the man can actually do this to the woman and what happens is for a man that understands tantra and he doesn't even have to touch the woman by the way he just works with her field and in this process you'll start seeing her go through what is a very strong orgasm and then at a certain point, she will peak in her orgasm and then it will flip from all of this enormous pleasure into all of this hurt and pain. So you'll watch her go from this arou ultimately aroused state to now start crying and sobbing and all of this. And of course, for anyone who's not a master playing around with Kundalini, you start seeing this happen and you disconnect for a moment, which could be detrimental to her. Because what she's going through is she's going through the cleansing process. 
And then in the cleansing process, since everything is the memories or the information, she's going through these memories and information of her pain. And what happens is that is corrected and restored. All of that is then basically replaced with the feeling of comfort. The feeling of stability. And then when she gets through all of that, her womb is clean. Her womb is clear. And when her womb is clear, her projections are like 10x, 20x, 50x. And this is what they know, again, in these occult societies that are still functioning. That's why there's so much desolation on the sacred feminine. And another thing, when everybody may think or some may think that this is predominantly pr propagated by the masculine energy, you're incorrect. On the physical plane, males don't actually have the type of power that it takes to completely dominate and control the realm because the realm is water. It's 70 percent water. So that's the percentile. So the being that is mostly water is going to rule. So that unlocks as I again, I, we, we talked about in GH, uh, not GH Reeves, but um, Glenn Keeley went to his death trying to explain to people about the Moho Mandan covens and priestess priestess crafts that were still out in, in, in the black forest, et cetera, where basically you had women that were attacking other women's wombs. You had a part of that spectrum of the Pleiades. You had certain women that had aligned themselves with the death and the de abortions and the, de and the destruction of other women's children. And it there, and it's only their power that is strong enough to hold so much of the of the realm under sway of continuously perpetuating the atrocities going on right now against women. And just like in a lion faction, which is the model again of the cat of what's happening in this in this sphinx and this this chimera that, that most of us are built with, in that sanctum. The male is not the one out hunting. The male is not the one. The male is back there taking care of the kids. The most dangerous predator, if you may, was the female lion. So, again, that's why those are our protectors. But our protectors can also be our destroyers. That's the yin and that's the yang. Where, where do we want to be? In the balance. In the balance, away from the extremes. Like processing the energy, digesting the energy, rooting the in, rooting ourselves in it, and then going forth from there. You know, if you get to something and it, it is just starting to make you fly off and you can't make any sense of it, you need to take one moment, step back, ground, because this is not Voltron and Transformers and My Little Pony and all of the rest of these programs that have been running to make you think that it's just all a game. If it's a game, it's a high stakes game. And what you can lose is your life. So if you invested already 25, 30 years, 15 years, 60 years into this venture, <laughs> you need to basically make sure that something comes from this. I don't need to be a venture capitalist to know that. I need to make sure that something comes from my venture here on this planet and all of what I'm investing in here with my time and my energy. And you only can seat yourself into that when you know where you come from. That's why sometimes, man, you just had to sit back and say, man, look at your ancestors. Go inside, see your DNA. Look where you come from. I don't have to accept anything that's not in alignment with the higher truth. And the higher truth is. You can sit you can sit someone balanced in front of it and they'll tell you every time what is what. Uh, someone says, how am I supposed to handle going through constant, intense Kundalini activations where I feel a tight electric current moving upward? How do I ensure this is a safe ascension process for me? Again, dealing with this energy and, and this is why like that's like the last class. Like that's even why there is such a again. Um, a certain knowledge that has to come around this energy because this, this energy is also, it's very sexual in, in many ways. So as a man and as a woman, we are expressions in the physical plane 
of two opposite poles. Okay. And so when the man and the woman come together, then they are basically in the state of the androgen if they're both activated. So if the man and the woman come together and they're both activated, they activate androgen. Now, some may say, well, what if I don't have a man? What if I don't have a woman? Okay. What it talks about is, is that you can bring yourself to a process of priming Kundalini. This means that maybe these breathing exercises and things that you're doing with yourself, the meditations and the mantras and all that kind of stuff, it will prime you for the process. And then when it's finally time and Kundalini is ready to now make its full circuit, the master will literally appear. Because this, this is not the physical realm is, is, is one of the last things to appear. There's already other levels where everything is more concentrated so it can see you. And that's why you should trust the process and know, hey, if I'm not getting that, once you understand the principles and how it works, if I'm not getting that or I'm experiencing something that I need to keep going, I need to keep working through, then I need to do that. And then when that's done, it will ding done. Now here comes the next level of the initiation. So if you're feeling like, you know, this, like I said, you said tight electric current moving upwards. How do I assure this is a safe process for me? Trusting yourself and, but use your craft, meaning no, am I grounded? Do I feel grounded? Like, am I confused? Am I angry? Am I fighting with people? Am I scared? Because Kundalini is an intensifier of these forces. That's why I said when you get into the orgasm, once it intensifies, it flips fields. And then everything that you need, you having all that joy, now you need to actually go through some pain in order to balance out all this joy that you just had because both of these are going to bring some level of growth. Lots of joy brings a level of growth. Lots of pain also brings a level of growth and thus it's balanced. So, and then also once you start removing yourself from that pain, joy, pain, joy, pain, joy, which is like really going into the center, you now get into like what is contentment. It's not then that you're trying to actually do something. You are it. You're sitting in the center of yourself at that stage.